Today, the term the Jewish question refers to a conspiracy theory claiming Jews to be in control of the media, academia, banking and politics. Jews are even held to be responsible for the mass immigration in Europe by people like David Duke, former head of the KKK. Alt-right figures like Richard Spencer and Mike Enoch too accept this anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. In debates with Duke, Spencer and Enoch here on YouTube, Tree of Logic effectively dis disproves the anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. There are no Jews in Europe responsible for letting immigrants into the country because they lack the political power to do so. Non-Jewish whites are responsible. In fact, Jews are leaving Europe exactly because of mass immigration, since it is becoming increasingly dangerous for them here with a growing Muslim population. In the US, only 8 of 100 senators are Jewish and only 24 out of 435 representatives, and there has never been a Jewish president. It is not true that the Jews hate and conspire against Trump. 53 Jewish billionaires, businessmen and investors funded his presidential campaign. Likewise, Jews do not dominate the banking system. Of the top 10 banks in the world, none is Jewish, and of the top 10 investment banks, only one is, namely Goldman Sachs. The US Federal Reserve, the central banking system of the US, too, is not run by Jews. Radical Muslims, too, falsely accuse the Jews of controlling the Federal Reserve. According to three out of 16 Federal Reserves, only five are Jewish, and the head of the whole system of Federal Reserves is not a Jew. I fact-checked this and found the following. There are 12 regional Federal Reserve banks that oversee the privately owned US member banks. According to the ADL website, ADL is the Anti-Defamation League, an international Jewish non-governmental organization fighting anti-Semitism and defending democratic ideals. Jewish control of the US Federal Reserve is a classic anti-Semitic myth. I quote from the website. In 1983, the charge that Rothschild banks and other international banking concerns mostly with Jewish names, Control the Federal Reserve was published, probably from earlier sources, in the newsletter of a local Pennsylvania chapter of the National Association of Retired Federal Employees, NARFI, not an extremist group. The article stated that the Federal Reserve System, quote, is not a federal entity but a private corporation owned in part by the following, Rothschild Banks of London and Berlin, Lazard Brothers Bank of Paris, Israel Moses Seif Banks of Italy, Warburg Bank of Hamburg and Amsterdam, Lehman Brothers Bank of New York, Chase Manhattan Bank of New York, Kuhn Loeb Bank of New York, Goldman Sachs Bank of New York. In fact, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, the largest and most significant of the Fed's 12 banks, list the banks in the second Federal Reserve District that are members and stockholders in the New York Federal Reserve Bank. With the exception of the Chase Manhattan Bank, the institutions cited by the NARFI newsletter as allegedly owning and controlling the Federal Reserve system, Rothschild, Lazar Brothers, Israel Moses Seif, Warburg, Lehman Brothers, Kuhn Loeb, Goldman Sachs, were not members of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. End quote. Yes, this information comes from a Jewish website, but that doesn't mean it is not accurate. Back to tree. Of the world's 10 most powerful CEOs of companies registered at Wall Street, only one is Jewish, namely Mark Zuckerberg, head of Facebook, she says. Six of the 20 wealthiest people in the world are Jews out of a world population of less than 2%. But this shows only that the Jews are very good entrepreneurs, not that they are dominating the financial system. The Jews also do not dominate media. Of the top 10 newspapers in the world, none of them is Jewish. The CEO of the New York Times, which is often attacked 
by anti-Semites, as being a Jewish newspaper, is a British Gentile. Of the top 10 newspapers in the US, only one has a CEO who is Jewish, which is the Ch Ch Chicago Sun Times. Of the liberal US press, only two are Jewish. Out of the top 12 television networks CEOs and the top 10 Hollywood movie studios CEOs, three each are Jewish. Neither do Jews dominate academia. 58% of the students at Harvard are white, of which 11% are Jewish. Among 182 professors at the engineering department at Berkeley, for example, only 17 are Jewish. In fact, affirmative action is discriminating against Jews at US universities because Jews are counted as whites. When it comes to the Jewish lobby, APAC, the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, spent $3 million last year in lobbying for Israel, whereas NAAA, the National Association of Arab Americans, which has since merged with ADC, the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, spent $27 million last year in lobbying for Saudi Arabia. Of course, the Jews lobby in their own interests, all ethnic groups do. Certainly, there are Jewish social justice warriors who spread narratives in the media and in academia that undermine white self-confidence. But they do this not because they are Jewish, but because they are white, out of a masochistic white self-hatred, of which many non-Jewish whites are also responsible. And yes, there are Jewish extreme leftists in academia. According to a study, out of 320 communist university teachers, 20% were Jewish. However, these teachers are not communists because they are Jewish, but because they are immature intellectuals who spent their whole lives at schools and universities and have no idea about the world of trade and finance. Tree rightly accuses the alt-right and others adhering to the anti-Semitic conspiracy theory of a victim mentality taken over from the blacks in America and of using the Jews as a deflection to draw attention away from their own incompetence, cowardice and personal failure. They are jealous of the Jews because of their intelligence and success, she says. Instead of blaming the whites for everything, like many blacks do, notably in Black Lives Matter, they blame the Jews, who make up only 1.6 of the population in the US, whereas whites in total make up around 70%. Like many blacks, the alt-right refuse to accept accountability for their own actions, instead using the Jews as a scapegoat.